the fluid in your differentials up. June 2021. Last year, June 2020, I blew the components out of my rear differential here. This video is going to be how to rebuild a rear differential if you're not switching, you know, um, ring and pinion gear sizes and um, doing it without fancy tools. And I waited a year to make this video to be sure that the repair would stick. Alright. This here is where the, the teeth are damaged on the big gear. Seems to be the worst of the damage on the big gear. See a little bite there and a bite in the middle of that tooth there. And uh, this one, that little mushroom that sticks in from the back there. Uh, those teeth are a little ate up, but there you go. Not too overly bad. problem is the bearing you can see pieces of it down in there pieces of it down in there pieces of it there look here Let's see it's got this seems to be holding it together And then oh, from here, you can see a seal and a bit of where the bear. Now I'm running into the incredibly odd and frustrating problem of not being able to get the inner race out. So I've cut it up, I've sprayed it down, I'm banging the shit out of it. A little coverage of it, man. It's probably good, you can take it out. Here's the air vent fitting, and this is the outside. You can see it's clogged. This is the view from the inside. You can see it's clogged. I'll drill it out, but having a clogged air vent can be easily overlooked and contribute to leaking seals in your differential. All right, the air vent was clogged up so badly, I actually had to put the nipple in a vent, a uh, uh, clamp. You can see the, the shrapnel from the gears that got shredded up. And this here is the differential cover. You can see someone somehow was punctured or nearly punctured multiple times, but totally punctured through twice. And the prior owner had actually sealed over it with a Bondo type material on the outside and the inside. On the inside, it had totally worn through on the outside the seal was broken and the fluid had been seeping out so I'm gonna do a fix on that with uh, metal screws washers and epoxy even though technically it should be welded all right I'm using the Dremel easy lock cutting wheel um, to take off as much length from these screws as possible Ideally, this would be welded um, the screws from the inside, and someday maybe I will. But I just want to tell you guys, I can't tell you how many times having a Dremel tool um, has been a, ne a necessity and a pleasure when working on cars and stuff.
Here's most of the parts laid out. The axles are not here and the main retaining uh, pieces are not here, but you can see the failed part. resurfaced new stuff old stuff there's that air vent and these are the axle seals and bearings this is the new ring gear there's the old one out oh some of the carriers just look like that I'm not worried about it I'm reusing those they're in great shape it's just the way it is and I fixed them holes pretty good. Right. Well, none of the adapters here really fit that well. Use the old parts to install the new ones. Lines up good. Got options for hammers. A late bit of oil to the outside to help go in. See, I've got the old race here. I'm just tapping. I've got it oiled up help it slide in just a little more depth on that so I'm gonna I got the old race the new the old it's gonna go a little something like that I'll give it a few hits like this for the inner race shit got serious I just needed a blunt end I got a big long pipe it's basically something like that, and I can address the pressure to any direction. Over how the pinion stacks. Okay, there's the littlest, tiniest washers that should be exactly the same size since it's the same ratio, 410. Then that inner bearing, and then crush bearing, forward crush bearing, then the outer pinion bearing, which Mine will slide down. Slinger, that's the old slinger. And then the seal, close all that in. This is the protector. Then this is the flange. That will go on here. And then the nut tops it off with blue thread lock. It's one time use only. It's just about perfect, a little tight on the end there. But the point is, it fits on the main bearing body and not the cage. It won't damage the cage as you bang it in. You definitely got to put the board underneath it. The board underneath it so it doesn't damage the metal. Now since the end was tight, I have to actually dislodge it. I have to use a rubber hammer, no metal, and I have to make sure I don't hit the cage. So, tap it until it comes loose and protect it from falling. Lubricating the outer bearing here with grease and oil installing the coating the back of the seal with black gasket maker Lube the outer pinion bearing with grease and oil don't forget the slinger let's put it in with the seal here's the rear pinion seal i tapped it in using the old seal and here's the slinger and the rear bearing, outer bearing. Got the flange splines loaded with grease, the inner bearing loaded with grease and oil. Uh, got their cover ready, and uh, blue thread lock for the one time use pinion bolt. See these two tools? These are called deflection beam torque wrenches, and what you need is the inch pound, not the foot pound, which is when you think of a torque wrench, it's usually foot pounds. You need this to check the precise tightening, and this I want to show you the difference. Okay, they say use a new nut, pinion nut, every time. 
it's subtle. You see the subtle squaring off where this is rounded? This is the used one. What happens is there's a crimp. See that indentation? They crimp it, which squares it off. And as you tighten it down, it rounds it out again. So it's one time use. Even if someone tells you, just Loctite it. Get a new one. And um, use the blue Loctite, not the red. The red will be too tight. Use blue if you're going to use it. Bird. It's like a velociraptor sneaking up on you. So, to describe this, um, it ended up tightening it down to get absolutely all the slop out. And then it's going to start to feel a little bit hard to turn. I mean, I'll try and show this to you. It's hard to show you with the camera. Here. It's hard to do this with one hand. It's just about 25. I want to show you guys the method on how to tighten this. If you don't have fancy equipment and stuff. Basically, leave at least two of your um, bolts that go into the flange. And you're going to want to pinch them with something like this and get down with a brick give you a solid surface so that's not going to go anywhere so when you go to turn it there you go now zoom it out mom and show them what a big bar I'm using see you're gonna need a, a big breaker bar with a long bit of leverage for this all right that's good Next up, new rear axle bearings. These are the old ones. See this one here? It's actually chip. Old seals, new seals. You grease up the bearing and uh, use the old to tap in the new. Here's the axle seal pre coated with black gasket maker. And again, use the old bearing to tap it in. That fits into a clamp just perfectly. You don't bother the bearings at all. So I, I kept it. this wire on here is basically keeping track of these things, which side they come off of. These are bearing races and shims for the carrier. Take them off of there, get to work on these, so I can move the old ring gear. I had sprayed these down with a penetrating, was it PB blaster? A few times, probably like 10 times, just to be safe over the days. You have the pleasure of your, your old ring gear just being stuck on here. You're going to drive down through, making sure you keep the bottom absolutely even if you have a bearing on there and on a piece of wood. Because you don't want to hit it at an angle and hit your, crush your bearing. What you're doing is driving through to press the old one out. You could block this in with like two blocks of wood to like steady it and hold hold something, but um, I'm just using my hand like this, kind of steadying everything, more like this. God, the devil's in the details. So now, you see a gap there. I'm gonna strike with the hammer, make sure I don't hit this gear, and remove your carrier bearings. You don't have real fancy equipment, all right? Use your a Dremel with a cutting wheel on it. Cut the outer cage with the bearing rollers right off. You're gonna see a groove here, a groove on the other side. You get in, grab it like that. The slide hammer, slide hammer tool here. I just made this framework by screwing two by fours together. See the end of the differential carrier sits in nice. I'm gonna flip this. So it was really on there very tight, wouldn't just pull off with the slide hammer or crack with the clamshell. So I put a couple of incisions 
either side. Not where we're gonna grab the clamshell. See if we can give that a good crack. You can see, finally starting to lift off. Got ourselves a nice gap underneath there now. Slide hammer time. There's our lift off. Down to a solid surface here because there's too much bounce on that table. So you want to put the narrow end onto the narrow end, not the wide end down because the wide end would hit the outside cage. You don't want to do that. Now we're just going to hammer away in like a star pattern. Okay, you can stop it. Not measure the backlash. I felt it. It felt really tight. Um, the reason I didn't measure it was I was using the same shims, which looked identical left and right, and um, the same gear ratio. So it was direct replacement. But I'm using some lithium uh, grease here and running it through to see what the pattern looks like. Here's the pattern. Looks pretty mostly on the gear. But I set everything up the same way it came out, and it worked pretty good until I read it dry. So, could I seal it back up? I'm just gonna fill this from the air vent hole. This is the air vent, and this cap you want to make sure is over this hole because if your truck is as rusty as mine rust will fall in that hole if it's uncovered and did what it did to me and cause your two side carrier bearings there and there to become pitted so make sure you got that covered this is an extremely advanced automotive task. The only things more advanced is probably engine and transmission work. Now my, I didn't include things like actually measuring backlash um, or actually putting the appropriate uh, paint, gear paint on to check the uh, pattern. I didn't include things like torque but in the links in the description will be the videos that helped me to learn and it took me months of watching them to learn. If you go to an automotive shop to get differential work done, a lot of these guys will tell you get a used differential from a junkyard because they don't want to work on it. They either don't know how or they don't want to. Um, but you never know what you're getting. Okay? So there's a break in period. Take it easy. You know, don't go too much over 45 miles per hour at first. And uh, don't drive, you know, much more than. You know, maybe 10 mi 5 miles the first run, 10 miles the next run, then you can go up from there. So, aside from that, I just wanted to tell you how much easier it is. It's almost a pleasure to work on a vehicle from above as compared to under a lift or laying on the ground. It's hot out. Stay cool, y'all. Take care.